It's a beautiful spring day on Coolmore Lexington Day, and no more beautiful sights than Keeneland Racecourse in Lexington, Kentucky. One of the final chances to earn qualifying points to get into the starting gate for the Kentucky Derby. Hello, I'm Greg Wolf, and this one last chance, of course, along with the Arkansas Derby later in the afternoon. And fans came out in droves to see the action for this grade three event. Over 37,000 on hand, third largest crowd ever at Keeneland. Here are the final odds at post time. Donworth lightly raced for Graham Motion. Went off as the eight to five post time favorite. Divining Rod, the most experienced horse in the field. Coming off a third place finish in the Tampa Bay Derby. Broke from the inside. He was going to have to deal with a lot of other speed, though, in this race. Let's pick up the call from Kurt Becker. Fame and power leads it by a length of the far turn. Don Worth just off his flank now in second by three parts of a length. And then Divining Rod is third a half length. Henry Jones to the outside from fourth. Comfort is three wide and fifth, four lengths off the lead. And here comes Don Worth now to challenge fame and power at the quarter pole. Comfort closing in from third, two lengths off that front pair. And here comes Divining Rod moving by Comfort, changing lanes to the outside to the top of the stretch. Fame and power, Don Worth, Divining Rod takes same from the outside. These three moving past the eighth pole. Divining Rod has taken the lead from Fame and Power and Donworth. Comfort is fourth. Divining Rod is moving on for the finish. Divining Rod and Julian Leperu, convincing winner of the Coolmore Lexington Stakes. So Divining Rod wins the grade three. Coolmore Lexington, he now has 20 points. That would put him 21st on the points list, just outside that top 20 for the Kentucky Derby, but still with a very good chance to get into the starting gate for that race that first Saturday in May. Joining me on the desk, the regular crew, Richard Migliori, the MIG, Simon Bray, Andy Serling, uh, MIG Divining Rod showing us a new dimension today and able to win. And I think that's how he's gonna be most effective, raiding early, coming from off the pace. I don't know if he's right now good enough to go on to the Kentucky Derby, but I think he's going to win some nice races down the road. I think he's got to catch, do a little catching up, as does the runner-up, who I know you really liked. Um, I thought he ran really well to be second. Yeah, that was a very good effort from the runner-up, but I'm with you, Mick. Divining Rod, to me, all he did was enhance the credentials of a horse like Carpe Diem that beat him last time. Carpe Diem is going to be one of the top five or six choices in the Kentucky Derby. The one thing we've learned throughout the spring, Andy, the form lines of these three-year-olds are very, very consistent. The good ones are good, and those horses that run behind them, they're also runs. No, it is really true. There are some very good horses running in this Kentucky Derby, but the horses that can't beat them haven't made up any real ground on them. And Divining Rob is a bit of an also-ran versus the Derby, but I think Richie made a very good point. There are a lot of big races run throughout this country this year, and Divining Rod, if properly placed, is going to get his name in, in some of those races. Julian Leperu wins this race for the third time. He won back in 2011 and 2013. Alyssa Ali caught up with Julian after the win. Well, here with winning jockey Julian Leperu. Julian, you had a nice, patient ride. How was your trip? That was a beautiful trip. You know, I saved ground around both down and came around uh, at the end. But, uh, you know, I was following the two favorite in the race, so I got a great spot. And he finished finish up very nice. Do you think it was a good learning experience for him to learn how to sit back and relax? Yeah, definitely. That was the plan today. You know, he's been going to the lead and kind of get tired at the end. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the plan. We knew there was some speed in there, so that was a perfect race to do. And uh, it, it was very professional. Didn't care or anything. It was very uh, relaxed, and the dirt didn't bother him, so that was good. And trainer Arnaud Delacour said before the race that we haven't seen the best of this horse yet. Do you think we're starting to see that? I think so. I think he's still learning, and uh, he's getting better, yeah. All right, Julian, congratulations. We're going to see what's next for Divining Rod. Alyssa, thank you. So Divining Rod squarely on that bubble. Very likely chance. There's always defections leading up to the Kentucky Derby that he could run under the Twin Spires that first Saturday in May if his connections choose to do so. Of course, the Breeders' Cup will be here at Keeneland October 30th and 31st. Racing fans very excited about that. We will see you next year on the Jockey Club Tour on Fox Sports 1 on July 5th. The United Nations Stakes from Monmouth Park from Oceanport, New Jersey. We will see you then.